This is what happened to Owen Morgan in the middle of his career. His batting technique had evolved in so many different directions that by the end, he was sitting on an imaginary toilet while waiting for the ball to be delivered. When you think of Morgan though, the shit batting squat probably doesn't come up that high in your mind. That just shows what a long and bizarre career he's actually had. After all, Owen Morgan is the Irish player who saved English cricket. And he did this despite failing at test level. Somehow England found a World Cup saviour in the underground cricket scene of Dublin. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. But Morgan is not some random who came to cricket accidentally, but someone who played from a very early age and comes from a long line of Irish cricketers. He also went all the way through the pathway of Irish cricket. His gay league sporting roots do run very deep, although it's probably been overestimated over the years how much his hurling background has helped in, I don't know, let's say his reverse sweep, but it certainly did play a part. And of course, early on before he ends up in the England team, he played cricket for Ireland. Back in the days when no one knew who they were until Trent Johnston hit this shot. And the Ireland players just went absolutely crazy as their lives changed forever. But wait a minute, it, who, who's that excitable Irish player? Oh, it's only Owen Morgan. Although that might be the day that changed Irish cricket forever. For his part, he received this incredible brood of a ball and didn't really trouble the Pakistanis all that much. For Ireland, he played until 2009, and while they played at the odd World Cup, they're probably more known for playing in the sorts of outgrounds and international wasteland that World Cup winning captains usually aren't involved in during their early 20s. And by 2010, he was back at a World Cup, but this time for England. And by the next One Day World Cup in 2011, Morgan was in the England squad again. But luckily for him, he wasn't actually in the playing 11 when Ireland went nuts in the second most important game in Irish cricket history. Though perhaps the most interesting game for Morgan around this point was the 2011 ODI in Dublin at Malahide. Morgan not only played for England, but he was man of the match and also captain as he defeated his friends and countrymen in a one day international. You would think that going home and dusting up your mates would be enough to show allegiance to your new home of England. But Morgan had a weird never ending news cycle around the fact that he wouldn't sing the national anthem. Funnily enough, eventually he came out to say that he hadn't really sung the national anthem for Ireland either, which I think was daring people to go and find footage to see if that was true or not. Though it is worth pointing out that while Morgan is definitely from Ireland and certainly part of Irish cricket, as a youngster he also came to England to play school cricket for Dulwich College, the same school as Nigel Farage. Which means that one single posh school helped England win a World Cup in cricket and also destroy the country through Brexit. But it's actually just worth going back a couple of steps here and going back to sort of who he was at the beginning of his career. Before his ascension in one day cricket, he was a test player and not particularly a good one. Early in his first class career, Morgan had shown some talent against the Red Bull, but it was very infrequent and not very consistent. His big scoring years would be followed by fellow periods, which weirdly enough would happen in White Bulls cricket as well, but they weren't as fellow. He could make Red Bull runs, but just not for that long and certainly not consistently. And in 2012, he played a variety of first-class matches, England practice matches, tests, county cricket, and even some A games. And in all of that, he averaged under 15. To put that in perspective, that same year in one-day internationals, he averaged 60. I mean, what the hell do you even do with that? And it was 2012 that was, unsurprisingly, his last in test cricket. Though he did play first-class cricket as late as 2019, but as you can see, not always well. With his test career gone, he could focus on white ball cricket. But like a lot of talented players in that era, he was stuck in this pretty weird team. And they did almost have success. They should have won the 2013 Champions Trophy. That was until Ishan Sharma dismissed Owen Morgan. But mostly the England team was playing 1990s cricket. Then 2015 came about, and that really is the change for him. His tenure as full-time captain started really oddly when he was part of a blackmail attempt. And somehow it got worse when England actually played at the 2015 World Cup. But then, inspired by Brendan McCullen, freed by Trevor Bayliss, and educated by Nathan Lehman, Owen Morgan turned English white ball cricket around. Most of this was as a leader, but it's also just worth looking at what he did with Joe Root in the engine room to allow that team to flow. Essentially upping their scoring rate and not being dismissed in the middle. Mopping up any problems at the top and then allowing the guys down low to attack from a great position. He is still the all-time leading run scorer for England in ODIs. 
And that doesn't include his runs for Ireland either. But the thing with Morgan is, as good as a batter as he was, he seemed to go through these prolonged periods where it looked like he could not make any runs, the scratchy and squatty period. If you're a Kolkata fan, chances are that's how you remember him. And many England fans spend a lot of times going, should he even be in the side? I mean, you'd see some of his dismissals and you would honestly wonder how he was playing international cricket at all. And then other days, he would do this. This was 100 from 50 odd balls where he took down Afghanistan. Sure, that's okay. But also Rashid Khan. He hit 17 sixes in this innings, a world record. I mean, he's five foot nine and quite often squatty, but when he hit the ball, it could disappear. But as good as his batting could be, it was never really the story. It was really about his single-mindedness. Myself and Melinda Farrell refer to him as the Ice King. In fact, my favorite story about Owen Morgan ever is when I traveled to Kolkata a few years ago and I read the local paper and he was being interviewed by an actress in a fluff piece. She asked the simple, easy question of whether Owen Morgan liked Kolkata. And he said he didn't. And he was just like that in press conferences too. He could be as cutting with the press as any major captain, but he was also kind of always brutally honest. My favorite moment was when he went at Dawood Milan in a press conference for not giving up his wicket to risk a single from the final ball of a T20. In that same game, Milan had made 103 from 51 balls. But it was that style that helped Owen Morgan build the first team to hold dual white ball World Cup crowns. They changed the game under him, and that probably doesn't happen without his incredible honesty. And yet when you think back on Owen Morgan, his career is really defined by three Ben Stokes moments. The first is his many conversation with Stokes in between Carlos Brathwaite remembering the name all over the place in Eden Gardens. At that stage, we didn't even know how far England was going to push white ball cricket. Remember, they lost in the semi-finals of the Champions Trophy the following year. But then there was the innings that changed everything. England at home, in a World Cup final, at Lords, in what is an incredible game. Ben Stokes carrying the tail and then hitting a six off the back of his bat, so to speak. That is the moment. It doesn't really matter what happens to Owen Morgan after that. He's the man that delivered England their first one-day World Cup after so many embarrassing tournaments. And the Stokes moments continue in the 2023 World Cup when England win there again. Now, many England are now the world champions in T20 and one-day cricket at the same time. And to be honest, they could have done that under Owen Morgan at the previous tournament had they not had so many injuries. But the interesting thing about this is that Morgan wasn't even at that event. He had already retired from international cricket after going through another and ultimately his last batting slump. But such is his importance to English cricket that even not playing, he is seen as the architect of them becoming what might be the greatest white ball cricket team we've ever seen. Owen Morgan went from an Ireland player to an England legend. He went from a test failure to an ODI great. And ultimately, he went from squatting at the crease to sitting on top of the world. 